Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. This is a show where we aim to educate, inspire and entertain through real life stories and interviews from people in the Scottish property community. As always, thanks for listening and give us a follow on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to join us at our monthly networking events on the first Wednesday of every month. Tickets are available on our website. So without further ado, we'll just cut straight into this week's podcast. Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast, Andy Janetta. Two N's, two T's. Two N's, two T's. <laughs> Good to meet you, Andy. <laughs> all right, how's it going? Yeah, I feel like I know you briefly just from watching all your Instagram posts, but it's great to have you in the studio. It'd be good, good to, to hear your story. Oh, thanks for joining us, man. Really appreciate you coming in and taking the time as well to chat. Now, you were just on Scottish Property Podcast Edinburgh event last night talking about your kind of journey, a lot about your journey. Your, it was more a deal you were sharing and a portfolio acquisition. So be good to dig, dig down deep into they that. You pulled in the numbers last night. Hey, it, was the, it was the highest attended networking event across the Well Scotland. done, Paul and Barry. Like the the flipping uh, beat Glasgow. It was almost probably, the probably it wasn't me. No, I was, I was, I was just the. <laughs> he was the, a deal filler. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So right. Uh, yeah, I, just, I just done the yeah, I done the deal Excuse of the me. month. So it was yeah. just uh, how I it was going over the numbers. The portfolio purchase I done last year, acquisition, yeah. exit finance, and stuff. It was you good. Get on to that. This uh, aye, before we go into the, the portfolio acquisition, <clears throat> I feel fucking a bit. Uh, I feel really like a fat, I know you were just sharing in the last podcast that you ate a kebab at 11 o'clock last night, but we've just had Mark Shatton talking about his marathons and we're going to talk about Andy's story. I know Andy runs ultra marathons and stuff like that. So ah, right. tell us a bit about yourself before we no. kick off and how you got started in property. I've just been to Greg's on the way in. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your New Year's resolutions are going well as well? Uh, well? I don't have any resolutions on diet, but yeah, obviously I'm pretty, I'm pretty serious mm. in my running. Um, Put a lot of time and effort into it. Where did that all start off? Like just when you were a kid or did you just get into it later on in life? A bit later on in life. Um, I've been through all the extreme sports, you know, snowboarding, climbing, uh, kite surf for 10 years. And yeah. then I, probably when I had my third child, it was, I can't really justify being away for the house for so long. So I started running. What, so, yeah. you're, so you're on 50 mile fucking runs like, <laughs> that's, well, the that's thing not how it started, <laughs> but it's just, it's, the, it's just the way I am. Everything just kind of extreme goes more extreme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so started off with your 5Ks, 10Ks, and then I ended up <laughs> in, in the hills and in the mountains. And it was, oh. Think it is, was that your, is that kind of your escape then as well? When you, things get it's tough and things get stressful I've heard of brothers saying yeah. that they just like that's the way they kind of zone mm -hmm. out as well so I guess there's some runners like to run in the morning I, I tend to like you know get home for work mm -hmm. drop my bag and just de out you've and got go. a busy life you've got a busy family work full time as well plus the property business that you've been building up as well the last few years intensely yeah, it's pretty much all go. Like ah. I spend a lot of my evenings working on the property stuff. Eh? Yeah. What is your job? Like, what do you do for a profession? Uh, <coughs> I'm project engineer, oil and gas. So I've pretty much been in oil and gas all my days. So, what age are you now? I guess I kind of knew Stevie from previous Sabima, life. Yeah. Uh, I used. We were both apprentices. Worked at, at the same, at the same company. Place. Ah, yeah. right, okay. What age are you now? Uh, I'm forty. Oh, uh, yeah, right, so okay. I'm forty this year. <laughs> so, so the property stuff has got to be basically after work, evenings. Like, what about weekends? When you do, when you get in your viewings and stuff like that. And I'm not really doing viewings anymore, to be honest. Right. I just, uh, I probably was in my last job. I was uh, FMC. I was probably a bit more, uh, a bit more flexible, flexible. <laughs> especially like with, with lockdown and everything. When you're working from home more. You could kind of sneak in viewings here and there and still get your your shift done but um now i'm in the office nine to five it's like pretty much relying on sorcerers and your yeah. network to bring you down that's one, that one of steven's questions <laughs> it's, it's like you know you can pay a sourcer because like one of the things is 2023 for me was so busy focusing on the business growth i didn't buy any properties so that's a few people actually came up to me last night as well and says like, just pay a sourcer Aye. just like, need to do the sums and see do you know what I mean? What, what works? Mm -hmm. yeah, are you sitting yeah. at your desk or are you doing out? out I, it's yeah. kind of like, for me, it is looking back on it, it's kind of like opportunity miss because there was mm. opportunities. Yeah. Um, albeit higher interest rates and stuff like that, but I, I probably should have kept buying looking back and, and like you say, for the sake of, you know, a couple of grand, couple grand three, three grand or whatever. Yeah. I, I suppose it's quite a hard pill to swallow now when you look at a social fee, a few grand and... 6% ADS, like your upfront costs are yeah. substantial now. You're like, fuck, I have to, you know. Who pays ADS? Oh, exactly, aye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, well, we'll get on to that one yeah. as well because listeners will be like, ah, 
well, how'd you get around that? <laughs> Stuck out there. This, uh, so what, what what was the attraction to property originally then? What was the, the pool? And then how was how, how did the first a few deals kind of go? Uh, so I guess the way it happened for me is it was accidental. So I bought my first home in 2007, right before the crash. And uh, so I had two kids. That, well, that was when they were first uh, in the oven, if you like. Bought that. Um so by the time they had hatched <laughs> and grown up a bit, probably maybe by the age of five or something, I, you know, we're in a two bed mid terrace, ex local authority in five. I was just like, it's getting a bit bit tight. Mm. So we were looking for a three bed, um, <clears throat> which we eventually found one, but just, I think that was in 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, so we moved in 2013 and basically to, to dispose of my old house, I would have basically broke in zero because I think I think we paid like 82 for it. Mm-hmm. 100% mortgage, I think, at the time. Uh, probably taking the mortgage down to 70, like low 70s, 70-ish. The state agent's like, I could probably get you 70, 75 for it. So by the time you add in all your fees, your legals, you're basically zero now. And I thought, scratch that, just keep it. Right. <laughs> and that was how it started. <clears throat> and uh, So did you give that to a letting agent or? No, I self-managed it yeah. for years. Um, I had some good stories, some bad stories. Uh, my first tenants, I'm surprised I'm actually still in the game. But, uh, <laughs> They've done a midnight flat and left, right. which, I mean, today that would be great, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you could increase your rent by 35%. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Whereas, did they trash the property or was it just not trash, trash, but, but they like... They some rent and stuff. They just, uh, they just oh, walked just, and disappeared. And it's like, uh, it was, so we still knew the neighbours because obviously we used to live there. So she'd text me saying... Right, they've bought so at least you had, gone, eh? you, at least you yeah. knew. <clears throat> Aye, but yeah. not a great start then. No, nah. but so I'm saying I kept, so that was on a... I kept it on the repayment mortgage. Mm-hmm. And it was like a consent to let rather than a buy let. Uh-huh. So I just kept chipping away at it. And then I think uh, around the time Brexit was coming, it was probably the same time I was refinancing the new house that we were living in then. And I thought, oh, I'm not easy, a bit, a bit uneasy about what might happen with rates and stuff. So I took equity that had, we had got in the new property, which had, it was actually quite a bit mm-hmm. I'd taken. I can't remember, it was like 30 or 40 grand over and like just paid down the mortgage on on the buy to let on the thinking, original yeah thinking if it was still on the repayment mm-hmm. i was thinking oh if the if the rates increase or whatever then i'm less exposed because it's like that's my business the business one that they'll mm-hmm. kind of hit you hard with whereas your resi you'll probably get yeah get away with more so i did that and in hindsight maybe it wasn't the smartest move mm. but um yeah and then i guess i've always followed steven's journey um because i've I know I probably know your wife better. Yeah, for the, for working in the office, but um, when you left, if someone says I know your wife better. Eh? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, looking, I'm looking at his face. I'm okay. going like, hopefully. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I guess I, I followed you in your mm. early days when you first left, and I was like, ah, oh, that's quite interesting, you know. And then obviously when you started the podcast, I think I'd already started listening to some other podcasts, which you know I won't name. English based shit. Ah, that one <laughs> <laughs> or, or those ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I've probably listened to all the episodes yeah. of the Scottish Podcast. Oh, thanks, podcast. man. Nice. One of our um, um, one of our regular listeners. Then thanks for uh, thanks for the support over the years. We started with the first couple as well. Yeah, good. Um, so I don't know where was I. Just about yeah, that first one. Yeah. Obviously, you put money into that to try and bring down the mortgage. Yeah. The one the value would have been pretty good then on that one. Then if you chumped a, a fair chunk into it. Yeah, right. So and then, then obviously the increase in. I think I'd taken it down to it was like thirty grand left yeah. in mortgage. But like you say, now knowing what you know now, you know looking back at it, probably not smartest because you could probably have done other stuff with that. So did you did you leverage it to grow? But I guess that's, that's I guess that's where I was getting to. I started mm-hmm. listening yeah. to the podcast, on, yeah. learning learning a bit, mm-hmm. kind yeah. of educating yourself and thinking, yeah, I probably got this wrong. Like you could fold that out into more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then start learning about the sort of strategies and what was available. So what kind of what what was the kind of clip? What kind of there was the moment? Uh, yeah, Twenty nineteen. So I lost my mum to uh, cervical cancer. Oh man! So, so yeah. um, I guess that's what everybody says. There's a yeah. pivotal moment, yeah. and quite often it's grief or mm-hmm. death or loss or something. So for me, that uh, that's definitely what it was. Yeah. It was, because our age, or I, yeah, pretty much. What like, age was she? Uh, I'm ninth. Roughly. Five years ago, I should be uh, 
50 young yeah young anyway so like a shock yeah, yeah. But way too young. Like basically, just yeah. just that sort of. How should we have been? Uh, yeah, mm. That's really bad. Yeah. And what nah. goes through your head then at that moment? Like, I mean, obviously you're dealing with the grief, but afterwards, once you kind of obviously pick yourself back up, you're like, does that change your whole? Actually, there was a couple of things. Was, one was probably like, you know, she died quite young, so everybody says whack into your pension, keep some cash for us, enjoy yourself mm. when you get to your pension. Well, she, she never really got to her pension. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, well, do I really want to do that and bank on actually making it there? Or do I just want That's to That's a do? really important point. And it's mm. a question that I ask myself a lot as well. You know, do you want to just be like living life for the moment? Or do you need <laughs> to think of it? You know, I like these late- conversations lately as well about it. Like you do all this stuff and I suppose in properties, that's such a long-term game that, you're almost setting it up for 15, 20 years time, but right. what about the here and now and the, the enjoyment of I not putting everything in a pension because you've got to live now? I think there's, you've got to find the balance. Uh-huh. Eh? And it maybe changes from year to year depending on yeah. what else you've got, got going on in your life. Like, um, I've kind of went pretty hard the last year in terms mm. of investing, but you know, like this year, it's like, this is 40. It's my, wife, it's my wife's 40th. <laughs> yeah. And it's my, my twins will be turning 17. I mean, they'll be probably like, how would you buy me a car? All right. So it could be quite an expensive year for me out with property. So maybe what's your outlook on things like pensions now? Then, uh, so I, I mean, I've I've set up a SAS now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so you're th- you're thinking along those lines. You, obviously, I, I as I've got older as well, mm-hmm. I've like really started to try to kind of plan that mm-hmm. as well. But it's something I did not think about in like my twenties and thirties. Yeah. But I, I would argue like you've got assets. Yeah, that you can hand to your kids as well, and I would I'd be her. telling my kids to start investing early, you know, in terms of assets, yeah. stocks and shares, funds. Aye. That aye, the minute they start working at seventeen, eighteen, get yeah, yourself yeah. putting a hundred pound a month in stocks and shares, eyes on. Yeah, definitely. It probably <clears> depends <throat> how you're earning your cash as well. Eh? Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're paying forty percent tax, then not forty two now in Scotland. You know, it makes sense just to yeah. sacrifice that and put it into your pension mm-hmm. if you're in a salary job. Whereas if you're self-employed, you bit more flexible. Bit more yeah. flexible. How mm. you how you move your what's cash the plan? What's the plan with the SAS? We mentioned SAS there. It seems to be a real, it's a real buzz thing at the moment. Like, what's the what's the plan with that? Great question. I don't <laughs> you do, you're doing it because everybody else is doing it. You've got your FMC pension, <laughs> haven't you? So it's now in my SAS. Is it in your SAS? Is, I See. believe it's in my SAS. Uh, uh, it just went this month. So did it. Did you not checked? Have you not checked? I, I <laughs> mine took an absolute fucking scalping, like ridiculous, like right. transfer value it was two hundred and five grand, and then dropped down to something like sixty eight grand within months. Right? So I, so I, I've set mine up as well because we were speaking about this, and I've not even transferred all. Because like, it what it tracks the stock because well, it's investing like know. stock market, and like, interest rate stock rises. And stuff you were on the final salary. Final salary. Yeah. I wasn't. Cause, oh, I do not because <clears throat> I had left FMC right. and came back. Ah, uh, right. And uh, when I came back, yeah, I was on the yeah. fidelity, whatever it is, I, I, the defined I, contribution one. So uh, you, are you thinking more SAS for your your legacy to the kids then? The fact that it's the the trust that it's not a part of your estate that they get the whole lot rather than I'm assuming what happened with your mum is no like fifty percent pension to your dad or didn't make it near there. Are you thinking that legacy thing? The SAS. <laughs> um, so I guess it's basically it's probably a bit of shiny penny syndrome. Eh? Yeah. Oh, I could get a, get a shot of that money and try and help grow the property mm-hmm. portfolio, which I guess is the main aim. Yeah. Get yeah. that and try and use it today. Like, you know, like I'm saying, my mom never made it to yeah. her pension. So if I can use that today to, mm-hmm. yes. to boost my life and my kids' life yeah. now, then mm-hmm. I'm all for that. Um, so did, how did you, when you started, I suppose, that 2019 changing point, what was the... What was the what was where was the scaling point in the portfolio? Like did you just, did you refinance one of the your house or your your buy to let to? Yeah, so as I'm saying, we'd had uh, we had a third third kid, and again we were looking to upsize again. So we'd ended up putting our name down for a new build. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I went in on the new build, I put as little down as I could, I took a took a bigger to take, mortgage, yeah. and basically cracked out about another hundred grand equity mm-hmm. out of the resi we were in at the time. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit of inheritance from my mum passing. Uh, well, actually, she had a flat that she had bought me in Dunfermline. Oh, right. 
So me and my oldest brother inherited that. Mm-hmm. So we've got another brother. He lives in Germany. Um, so he he took cash. Yeah. And me and my brother took the flat. Um, it was worth hundred grand or whatever. Yeah. Eventually, I think we held it in cash for almost two years during lockdown, just because. But was, you couldn't really spend the money. Yeah. yeah. And I had other cash that I was doing stuff with as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I eventually refinanced it, we put it through at like 115k and they came back valued 120. So we basically got all our money out. Uh, um, that's, is that not unusual when you go for a refinance and you get a valuation higher than you, than you put it? So, <laughs> like, so, so that was, uh, was Kessa, I think, we used for that. And he's like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to put it at 120? I was like, nah, just leave it. Can I get his number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, or the, the oh, surveyor. Oh, sorry, Kessler, no, no, no. right? No, I'm okay, talking right. about the, the mortgage. mortgage broker, right? I thought, sorry, I thought you were saying the surveyor. Aye. Right, so, right. so that gave you a fair bit of cash then to then start. So that was an extra mm-hmm. pot of cash. Yeah. Um, but that was, I guess, when I said, so I've got those two in my personal name, my original one plus the one we inherited. So there's no ADS on that. Uh-huh. The, the estate cost took the cost of all the legals and everything setting up me and my brother um and then yeah i guess i cracked out the equity from my personal residence and i refinanced the other one that i had at the same time and basically just took all the cash set up the limited company and kind of okay. went on a real push so what kind of like so that so that was obviously <coughs> what sort of funds what sort of funds would you be talking about a couple of hundred no 150 grand or something so you managed to get to go and really start uh, going at it. Do you know what I mean? It's probably closer to 200. Yeah. So that's good chunk. It was like 100 yeah. out of refinancing the house. There was maybe 40 from refinancing the buy to let. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess the rest was kind of inheritance. Right. So the, the first move I made actually is my dad, he has four or had four properties and he's getting a bit older. So I kind of approached him. I was just, you want to offload. So I, I bought one from him, but yeah. it's actually quite difficult to get a good deal off family. <laughs> That's what you say, yeah. <laughs> because uh, the tax man gets more interested in it. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of, I kind of had to give him a fair price for it. Yeah. But what I did with that. Because I suppose any discount you could have put as your inheritance, so as, well, as a deposit. Yeah, so you could gift stuff. Yeah, but, I give you a deposit, but... If he passed away within that seven or ten years, then you have to pay inheritance yeah. that or goes part of the state, mm. yeah. It's quite complicated. So... But then obviously I'm not the only beneficiary of that. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's... Yeah, so I basically bought so one from him. He screwed you to the wall with <laughs> fucking got no, a good I, deal. I got a deal, but I mean, like, you know, <laughs> you can only put so much through because yeah. I'm, if you put it really low, I'm saving ADS and he's uh, saving capital gains. So yeah. the tax man's very interested in that. Ah, uh, right, I see. Aye. Uh, because it's a linked transaction with uh, blood relative. And, and there's only certain lenders that'll do it as well. Yeah. So you to like, and so you pay a bit more. Yeah. A lot of a higher rate. Mm. So I took that one off my dad. And as soon as I gave him the cash back, I was like, you loaning me that back? Well, it was already the agreement, basically, yeah. before I started. So, nice, would, so your, your cash is going out. He's going to become a private investor to so that was get my money first back investor. in. So, nice. I mean, it only cost me, I don't know, say 20 grand to get into that because mm. I bought it outright on a mortgage to begin with. Mm-hmm. He got his cash and I think it was 45k came back to me and I just started going so I had yes basically went and bought another one which I found on the mar- on the open market uh, it used to be a rental whereabouts what locations are these uh, so the one I got from my dad that's up in uh, Arbroath that's where he lives so he's, right. got, he's got he's still got three up there um, it's the only one I have up there <clears throat> uh, I'm Fife based yeah. did you put the line agent up there Aye, so it was yeah. already with, um, is it Wardaw? Right. Um, so I've just left, left it with them. Uh, they're all right, actually. Mm-hmm. No complaints. Um, so that's still up there, churning away. It's fine. Yeah. Um, not refinanced. It's, still, it's on a five-year, so it's not it's not been refinanced. Um, but it's, it's performing all right. Yeah. Um, and I've managed to do a few deals with my dad's cash um, mm. back back down in the central belt. So... Was that a decent rate? She secured that five year fixed in. Was that before the rate started going? Uh, I think it was like 3.7 ish. Hmm. I can't remember. Yeah, something like that. So, so, yeah, that was 2020? Yeah. So, still. By the time, time you go refinance, we'll be back down at that rate. <laughs> <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> That'd be a nice transition now. Um, 
So I guess that was the first one. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so I found one on market um, in Fife and I'd done a bit of a sort of light refurb to it, tidied up the bathroom, refloored it all, redecorated it all. And, uh, what was your purchase for that price, purchase price, you remember? Fifth, between 50 and 55, and I think I refinanced. Uh, quite low end stock then. Mm -hmm. uh, Whereabouts so is that? What? What's in Glen North <laughs> <laughs> It's not a bad area for Renault stock, to be fair. It's pretty to good. To be honest, it's, it's good. It's had one tenant in it, and it's it right? been yeah. bang on, so absolutely no complaints. Yeah. But, uh, what was that, a flat or a house? It's a flat. Yeah. Benefits claiming tenant, or? No. 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 Private, and yeah. What did you get the refinance it's back had one at? tenant, actually. Um, when I first let it out, the guy, as soon as he moved in, put his notes in. So, so, so the one that was like second yeah, yeah. in line moved in so two weeks later. A one-day tenant and a five-year yeah. tenant. Yeah. He got offered a job in yeah. Norway where he's worked, so who wouldn't go? Yeah, exactly. What, and uh, what did that re refinance value come back at then? I think it was around 65. Right, yeah. Something. So opened up the, lender, the other rest of the lenders. How so much so. did you spend on the light refurb? Probably, like, I'd done most of the work myself. Aye. I think this was during lockdown, mm, so okay. you couldn't get tradesmen and everything. So... Um, other than like fitting the carpets, mm. pretty much done the majority of work myself, tidying up some of the plumbing and uh, and decorating. You know, got my kids in to to do some of the painting with me. But uh, see, they've earned a car when they turned seventeen. Did you say that was a <laughs> uh, no? That was a, on a mortgage, five year fix. Was that? So I took that one on a five year fix as well. Aye, right? got you right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I've put everyone on five year fix. Yeah. Just when you look at the cost of the refinance at the longer term it just kicks it in the road as well, well. by the time mm. you pay your legals and mm. your uh, your fees Easy arrangement fees and it uh, cost you mm. yeah five grand I mean not five grand but a few uh, grand anyway each time yeah so you know what I do that every two nah. years or Aye. even three years so. five years and then product switches the, yeah. the product switches product transfer switches I've been putting on two yeah. years if there's no fees if there's no fees but yeah Aye, that's alright because yeah. you're, you don't really have the legals on yeah, that either exactly. mm. yeah exactly Aye. But mm. ah, you're right, if it's a new new purchase. You probably don't have a broker for you either. No. Nah. Because they'll get paid exactly. by the lender. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're going out for a new, for ah, a new, new deal. New, got, new deal, new purchase. Yeah. Whatever, you're 500 bucks. Aye, right? absolutely. A grand for your legal. Yeah, and the, the other thing I've been looking into lately, because you keep bringing up about these higher arrangement fees, um, you know, 5% or whatever, is that obviously they're added on a loan. Mm. So what happens is, if you're only taking out a two year, <laughs> and pr prices prices remain prices, stagnant. Yeah, yes. yeah, even stagnant. Yeah. And you're having- Your 75 goes to an 80 Fucking 80, 80 yeah. and you have to go and put in 5% and get your you're loan. You're in negative out. equity yeah. straight away. Yeah. On yeah, refinance, which is very high leverage, that it's going to cause you limit, yeah. it's limited options basically at the end mm. of it, isn't it? So, we did, we did that a lot with our finance uh, products the last six months, was the ones we were paying five percent arrangement they were all on five years because yeah like you say you've got five years to try and either pay down that debt to get that five cent back off mm. if you don't get any capital appreciation in there at least you're not exposed to high leverage mm. how many more wars do you reckon we'll have in the next five, <laughs> five years, years. <laughs> that affect our five year fixes uh, <laughs> that's the thing isn't it but probably a few uh, <laughs> the way it's going and if trump gets in as well <laughs> china china and taiwan is it yeah, yeah, yeah that'll be the next one uh, aye, so getting back to your story <laughs> So where you're sitting now, then you've got another. You've bought another. You've bought your one off your dad. You've bought one in Glen Rothes. Yeah. Things are growing. Yeah. So just keep looking for deals, mm. and uh, so I'd, I knew a, another family friend who had uh, who had two. Again, get, getting older, and they'd kind of. I think they'd heard what I'd done with my dad. I was like, oh, you've not offered me that deal. I was like, didn't you know you were interested. Uh, right. So. Started the dialogue, the to and fro, you know, how much would you want for them? And you know, me trying to figure out what they actually were, what they were worth. I probably went on for a while and eventually uh, just got told a well, number. I was like, I could do that. It's probably a few grand more than I wanted to pay. But as long as you lend me the money back. <laughs> so this was it. It was the deal. So uh, that became my, my so I bought, I bought two of them. And uh, because I knew them, we kind of, we could massage the figures a little bit. Mm -hmm. So one was a lower value stock and one was higher value. So mm -hmm. we pushed the high one as high as we could and we took the lower one below yeah. the ADS threshold. So I bought, it was a one bed flat and a three bed flat. So I bought the one bed um, in Cross Hill, just mm -hmm. outside Locker Meadows. Yeah. So I bought that for 40, uh, sub, sub 40 mm -hmm. grand. And the other one was... Uh, I think we pushed it for 82 and I think they came back and said 78 is all you're getting. So, uh, 
And see that one under the forty grands. Like you can't you can't get lending on that, can you? No. So I paid cash for that. Yeah. And I bought the other one on a mortgage. Uh huh. And then, basically, it's worth. It's well, I've actually I've added it, and now is what I'm refinancing my portfolio with. Yeah. It's been valued at sixty k. So Probably. getting your forty grand back. Yep. Plus yeah. Plus some. So. Uh, at what point were you you're back? So, I mean, I suppose you're not spending your pot to a certain extent because every time you're buying one from a family member, you're getting the, the they're becoming a private investor and lending it back to you anyway. Yeah, so the pot's still staying in there. And then what? I missed that bit. Sorry. Can you, can you just elaborate a wee bit on this getting the <coughs> private investor stuff? So, <laughs> when I bought the first one with yeah. my dad, he the equity he got out, he just loaned it back to me. Ah right. Okay. So I was I was helping him the with his uh, with his fuel bills because he's <laughs> oh, yeah. an old man. So the the next deal I done with, with the, those two tenanted ones um, was pretty much a similar deal. Mm-hmm. That was a, a friend, family friend. Uh, so it was right. like forty k back from right. that. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Okay. And then so I was basically using a bit of my cash, I had two investor pots of cash, and that was me. I just started kind of buying like one at a time. Yeah. Where, 40 grand of investment and maybe whatever, 10, 20 mm. grand a month. And see your yeah. interest that you're having to pay back, like your investors at this point, are you are you paying them, like are you having to pay them monthly or how's that working? So when I first done a deal with my dad, he gave me the money and it went into the one in Glen Ophis that I refurbed and I got a bit of grief on the refinance, I had to get an EWS1 and everything. Um, mm. So that kind of dragged on. So I had said to him, you know, it's probably six, nine months, but by the time I can really refinance, it was probably a year. So mm. it was just, you just started having hand. those awkward conversations of mm. when am I getting my money back? And I was mm. like, this mm. is it's not healthy. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, we're family. So, so it's basically, and at the same time, your portfolio is getting a big, bit bigger. You've got a bit more cash flow. So I switched it all to monthly because uh, that, that was, Keeps I'll, I'll return happy. the interest at the end yeah. and your, your funds. So uh, actually, I'd, Originally, it was I was going to return your funds plus interest. deal by deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, quickly switched to what have you used like a couple of years? Uh, right. Or it was I think we've been Slap on twelve, 12 months rolling. Yeah. It's that. What's happening? My money. Right. <laughs> Aye. So whatever, whatever's out, he's getting paid monthly plus the capital can come back whenever. Yeah. Right. So it was exactly. like, I think uh, I think we've done twelve months rolling, and then the next one I signed up for two years, but they're all on monthly now. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a question that comes up as well. A couple of young folk came up to me last night. They're like, "How do I get into this? You know, I don't, I don't have any money to start a property, but I really want to get into it." I was like, "Well, mate, you know, there is people around here in this room that just started without their own money. Mm-hmm. And it is doable. Uh, I mean, obviously, it not, is not easy, though. Right? No, it's not easy. I mean, let's be realistic. I mean, you were kind of fortunate you, in a place where you you did have that network. Close you have to, to work harder because if you're you're finding a deal and you have to find the money, because <clears throat> if you had the money, it's you've got half the work to do almost. Yeah, so that's, you have to work hard for it, but you have to do a couple of deals to show yeah, you're credible. Yeah, whether that's with your own money or somebody taking a chance on you, on you, borrowing um, somebody's money out. But I think until you've done a couple of deals and people are like, actually, this guy knows what he's doing, uh, uh, I can, I can trust you, that. Can trust did you have cash. any, see that second investor that you got, which was just the, the family friend, was that a, a, a difficult conversation or was that go quite quite easily? Did you, I mean, no. they obviously had the trust in you already just yeah. from being mm. long-time friends, right? I, I mean, they, they knew what, what, Basically, the deal was with, with my dad, and they were like, ah. Aye, right, right. Okay. So they're, they're approaching you, and this is that this is the cool. conversation that I was having with people when they're talking about like raising private finances. Like, you never go out and ask for the money. People come to you and offer you the money. If you've got something I can invest, and in, I heard you've done X, Y, and Z, and it, they're offering you the money, so it becomes an easy conversation when they're coming at you and trying to give it to you. As you got to tell I've people. asked fucking Nick in the podcast for three years to give me his money. He doesn't give it to me. I'm gonna try it later, <laughs> mate. Everybody tries this. Opportunity <laughs> missed. Another opportunity <laughs> missed in 2023. <laughs> Um, so t- take us like so you're, you're building the portfolio one at a time we kind of know that's that's quite painful and slow what was the I suppose the the mindset shift and the the growth mindset to go right fuck I can buy portfolios or I can scale this up a bit quicker um, I don't know I guess we're probably in lockdown then mm-hmm. and um, I was kind of getting a bit sick of my job at the time. I was working, I, it was probably partly working from home, lockdown. Yeah. Uh, my, the project I was working on was a bit of a mess. So it was just a case of the kids go down at night. 
it's just me that's going to fix my project. I may as well put my computer on and get on some with some work. So I'd find myself working for 10 till 2 in the morning and then you check your calendar and I've got a meeting at half 7. So you go into your bed and you're getting five hours sleep. So I probably burnt myself out. Mm. Partly the project I was working on, partly probably just my self-discipline and being stuck in the house and just wanting what? to just crack on and get mm. it done. <clears throat> um, so I think that was probably when I started looking at SAS. So I've ended up consulting now. So I've set up my own company. So I've got a trading business and then the, the holding business. And I've moved my pension into SAS. So yeah. I guess that was all kind of part of the plan, mm. restructure, yeah. So that I could... It's the portfolio under the holding company as yeah. well. So I so the whole trading company. Yeah, no, company. I don't, I don't have a holding company set up at the moment. But mm. it's uh, potentially something that I'll look at. Yeah. Um, I've got some TMWs, so yeah. I need to wait. And then what was the... What was the what was the plan then moving forward? Like what you've been doing like the last I suppose year year and a bit. So, I guess part of the story was there. I ended up with a really bad uh, letting agent, and I ended up I guess speaking to Sam, mm -hmm. and Sam kind of took over a bit. And I basically started taking over all my all my tenant in stock. Mm -hmm. um, Sam and Tracy yeah. giving me a, I mean they're quite expensive yeah. but they're freed that time up for you yeah, and took the stress like, away from you yeah pretty much I trust them mm -hmm. so I could just focus on what's next yeah. not what's in the past and just crack on um, so yeah set up the new the new role and uh, you know, there's just a bit more cash coming yeah. in from that as well um, the risk of being a contractor you get paid paid a bit, bit better but you know you've got the property portfolio kind of mm -hmm. behind you you're Mitigating that risk of yeah. not having you've got to that put it aside for tax, so as well, haven't you? You've got to remember you've got a tax bill at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no you know, you said you've got money. <laughs> Still to pay my personal tax this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I bought, I ended up, I bought a tenanted one from Sam. That mm. was kind of where I went next. And so I guess why I was leaning on to, to Dyer and Co. Um, I managed, was it, managed to take a tenanted one. From, does that not that that would kind of like that would give me questions straight away? I'd be like, if you try to sell me a property, right, or Sam try to sell me a property, I'd be like, why are you selling that to me? <laughs> What's why it? not? Like, why are you not keeping it? It <laughs> so, wasn't his. It was, oh, one, right. it was oh, one, one of his sourced one of his landlords. Oh right, and, right. I thought it was one of his. Oh, right. The way I look at it, is if he's willing to retain the management, it can't be that bad. Oh yeah. right, sorry. I thought you yeah. were talking about one of his own properties. Because I'd be like, well, yeah. you know, if it, it was a complete lemon, he'd be like, oh, I'll just hand over to Nick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll look out for those lemons. Uh, Grunter, we should have probably that. Yeah. That's the new term. How was the know. process buying tenant and stuff? Because that's a very popular strategy right now, and, and so it should be uh, with the way the market is in Scotland. Yeah, I guess even uh, now, since uh, I guess all the all the I, don't know, I guess everybody's trying to get rid of stuff and. Mm. Huge risk of trying to evict somebody to sell. Yeah. Because they'll just be like, nah. It's I'm, good motivation for a good discount. Yeah. Mm. So, and a lot of people probably thought it was quite a high point in the market mm. as well. So if they've maybe been in for 10, 15, 20 years, they've made their cash. Yeah. So they can give you whatever, 10, discount. 15, 20% discount. And they're still happy. Mm -hmm. Whereas you, you know, you maybe take on a lower rent. Yeah. But you're, you're building the equity for another day, right? How did you find the, I like the processes, I don't know if you found it, the <clears throat> one you were saying at the start when you're kind of starting off your, almost your BRRs to then buying tenant stock, it's almost like I'm assuming you're in your job, someone sourced you this property, it comes with a sitting tenant, you have fuck all refurb to do, so. That's brilliant. It's, aye, it was That's a way, it's brilliant. like, <laughs> how, how did, that, did that open your eyes up to like, oh shit, this is a whole lot easier than buy refinance and then refinance? Refurbished yeah, and then uh, much easier. I guess that maybe what I missed is the year that I moved house mm. was the year I was probably overrun at work. Yeah. It was when I'd done the refurb on the Glenothis flat. But I, straight from the Glenothis refurb, one of my personal ones came vacant. I thought I'm going to go in and just I just moved my tables for one or the other. Straight up a new bathroom in there. Redecorated the whole place. And then again, from the back of that refurb, the other personal one came vacant. Straight into that. Same again, full, full on new for uh, new floor, and it was basically between like well, that one was on a half of my brother, so he was kind of helping me with that. But I went from refurb to refurb to refurb, plus your work, and I bought my new house. Uh, and the wife's going, Aye. Aye. you need to be here." I'm like, "I need to get like 
Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I've got no, a tenant moving in and like that's not going to go down. Uh, so we moved in. And you, go, you, <laughs> you go from that year to buy a tenant property. And that must have like, been a fucking. Weird, I can't like, do that. Uh, like, I, I can't do that. Yeah. Like, this is not why I got into property. You know what yeah. I mean? It was right. just, to work hundred hours a week. Yeah. But with, with, this buying, with this strategy of buying a tenant property, then obviously, what's the the goal is to still try and recycle as much cash as prop possible in the end or are you not too fussed about that at this stage yeah so i guess the one that i bought off sam and then uh and the one so the one that I said i bought for 40 grand mm -hmm. i've had a, i bought that in april 2022 and um, i've had a title issue on that and it's just getting fixed now it's probably on not the 40 grand fixed. one yeah Aye. that was april 2022 Aye. and it's still uh the still lingering yeah mm -hmm. the and it was just, it's ridiculous. It was just like shared areas wasn't right. And uh, the solicitor's like, either you can lie over and accept that that's you don't get any of that land or fix it. And I was just like, well, it's not right, is it? So fix it. Not thinking it would be <laughs> almost two years, two years down the line. <laughs> wow. So I tried to remortgage it. And that was when it all, I found out that I couldn't. <laughs> and then mm. all the rates went high and I thought, it's not even worse remortgaging by the time mm. you take Aye. the cost of doing the borrowing arrangement and everything. Like, yeah, yeah, because the I've got a cheaper, I've essentially got a cheaper rate from the, the private investor. investor. Yeah, and uh, so that was I kept that, and then when I brought the, bought the one from Sam, it was pretty much the same. The rates started to go, and I thought I just hold it in cash. Mm. I still had a bit of cash in mm. in the bank to maybe do another deal. So I thought, and I was yeah, just I was too busy with working that. I thought, yeah, I'll just I'll just hold on and wait and then i guess i started looking at portfolios yeah eyes get open to it like, yeah well, that was and easy it was like i was like yeah i think i want to buy a portfolio and it's like so was that through was, listening to Stephen talking about like portfolios or did you just so, Sam Bobby yes I, I joined sam's mastermind mm -hmm. um oh, i can't even remember when a couple but, years ago uh, a couple mm -hmm. years ago now and um before sam and stevie merged into this as well there's a plug <laughs> Sam will next when I fucking cut that out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I joined Sam uh, it's not I didn't know what mm. I joined Stevie's it's, it's I guess yours was probably more about developing refurbs mm. and everything I was like ah it's not me man I'm done like <laughs> but Sam's is probably yeah. more strategy of building and you know the Sam portfolio is types aye, <laughs> aye, like being lazy like not, me. not leaving that fucking desk <laughs> spreadsheets <laughs> yes <laughs> that's me totally aye. me uh, so I joined it's I joined and ah, it's, I mean, it's not training, Nick. It's, yeah. uh, no, I know, I'm, I get it, I get it. It's surrounding yeah. yourself and we're, with people that are doing that kind of stuff and yeah. people make mistakes. They come in and they share it with share the group it, yeah. so you learn mm -hmm. from their mistakes. So you're like, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, even you, just, you mentioned as well, about, like the title issue, that's something that most people would never fucking pick up on for you to share yeah. that on the podcast or in, in the group as well. Like people realise, listen to that and if they had that issue, they're just gonna, that's going to come to their mind. Yeah. Remember Andy had that said that took two years to resolve that, but people would just go, yeah, yeah, fix it. And not realize yeah, implications. When you're taking your private investment, if you're doing it deal by deal, mm -hmm. that could put you in a really difficult position. <sighs> yeah. Whereas if you say two years, yeah. I mean, you could, I'm not going to lie. I probably could have expedited that quicker. I yeah. probably could have been on the phone to registers of Scotland saying, get that sorted. Aye. But I've just kind of let it roll because. That's less our pace. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and see that so, title issue, did that, that <coughs> raise itself then when you tried to get the refinancing on it? Yes. But that was like almost... Why did that not come up when you bought the property? Because right. I bought it in cash. Ah, right. Mm. So the title was... Uh, I don't know how it works, but it's not in a hurry or whatever. Uh, yeah. Wasn't yeah. checked by a lender so that probably yeah. would have picked it up, yeah. So it wasn't until... <coughs> Because, uh, so I guess there's the, the whole day one refinance yeah. and stuff. So I was basically buying in cash and holding for six months and then trying to refinance mm. after six months mm. at the slow pace, mm -hmm. uh, which was all right because I had a couple of pots of cash running at the same yeah, time. You so you can it. still do a few deals a year. Yeah. Um, just, let's talk us through this portfolio. I know that people will be keen to hear the yes. portfolio because <laughs> <portfolio, laughs> like yes. the ADS pain point, the the, the you've dipped a toe, toe, toe into buying a tenant property, and you're like, this is fucking easy. This is good. This is the way. So now it's like, right, the portfolio portfolio's got to be the way. 
Definitely not easy. <laughs> uh, so Most people are thinking portfolio, uh, you need loads of money for that as well, so make sure you touch on that. Mm. I guess it was probably at the start of uh, last year, mm -hmm. we were probably sitting down talking about goals and I'm terrible at that stuff. Yeah. But Stevie's pushing it. Stevie does most of the goal setting sort of sessions with us and uh, something like, it's going around, the, it was probably on Zoom, but yeah. going around everybody. Some of the guys are like, so I just made it up there and then. I was like, <laughs> I, want to, well, I want to double my cash flow. So like, I think I, I probably had seven at the time. Yeah. So I was like, what a double the cash flow? How do you do that? I probably need to go and buy a portfolio. So I was just like started telling people, I want to buy a portfolio. It's funny when you put that out in the <laughs> universe, ain't it? <laughs> right. And uh, I mean, it's kind of like, if I, if I want to buy a portfolio and nobody knows, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So right, I just started yeah. going like to sorcerers, whatever. Yeah. Every call, just, portfolio. Like, <laughs> just like sitting on the, on the train. All right, mate, I want to buy a portfolio. <laughs> 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 Maybe not quite, but you know. But it's just getting out there and telling people. So. Excuse, me, excuse me, can I cut in front of you at the line? I want to buy a portfolio. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, parasite. <laughs> so when did you have that in your head? At the start of 2023? Three. Yeah. Probably, yeah. And um, so... I mean, I'd probably already started appraising some stuff for like yeah. you know, maybe por or portfolio, like some of the like the ones you can sign up to. Right. Some deals. But they're uh, not. They're not ten a penny. Are they? I mean, there's not loads of them about. Do you know what I mean? It's not like no, you can just go and buy their portfolio for a while. Eh? Yeah, some, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, let's just be real, like, because listeners are like that, thinking, "All right, so this is what I need to do." Because because it does seem to be the real buzz thing at the moment buying portfolios. I don't know if you've made if you. It's your fault. Uh, You've fucking the same as Aberdeen, yeah. Um, it's they're becoming more and more popular, right? You know, because how because uh, older landlords, older are tired landlords are just going fuck I this. We're mean, getting hit again. Right, you know, if it's, right. If it's like Section Twenty Four and somebody's Aye. holding them in their personal name, they're now going yeah. Rent rent caps like yeah. and if they're refinancing, they're going to be getting yeah. smashed. So so, so before we get on to this deal, then what's the kind of top tips to, to find these portfolios then? Because that was a question again. Somebody asked me last night, and I was like, "Well, just reach out to agents, you know." And, and they put and they put a manifest on our group and yeah. <laughs> put them. Sign Tell up people. to this as well. <laughs> we'll show you what it's all about. Yeah, old man, you got to they, surround they, yourself uh, with the people that are doing portfolios. Who, who, who did we like buy that portfolio? Was that score someone in the group? Wasn't it? It was. Uh, I can give my plug, Ryan yeah. O'Connor at yeah. uh, Range Investments. Um, he was in the group. He's not yeah. he's in any, anymore. So mm -hmm. he was. Yeah. So he brought it to me. Yeah, so a sourcer got it, yeah, and so source and agent. Initially it was a nine, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm interested, had a look at it, and I was like, you know, doing the, doing the due diligence, like, I don't, it was, a, nine so it was in West Lothian, which I'm not really familiar with mm. West Lothian, I just, the usual one, whatever, street check, uh, that SIMD, like, multiple, in, or SMID, yeah. is it? Multiple index of deprivation, checking all, like, all the crime areas mm. and stuff, and I was like, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Walking Google Maps, checking. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I think I'm interested. You know, sat and done. Tried to look at comparables for them all and uh, looking at rentals for them all. It takes time. Eh? Mm. That's probably, you know, an evening's you're probably the best part of a week just yeah, to yeah. go through eight properties properly yeah, and yeah. go. Dig, dig deep, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably worth a punt and, you know, uh, or nine it was mm. at the time. Uh, so, I think with, with Ryan, they were actually, it was an old couple that were selling up and they, I think they had sold their personal residence with, um, with an estate agent. They had went back to her and said, can you help us get rid of these? And I think there was a couple of vacant ones. So she'd managed to sell one. Yeah. Went down to eight, but she'd also said to, I think Ryan, I think they knew each other personally. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to help me punt these? So but, that he brought it to me. But they came through an agent, technically. And then that's the thing is, is yeah. people were wondering. But the agent hadn't put it on the market. But then how does, no. an, how does a letting agent, how does an estate agent put a portfolio on the market? Because a estate agent, yeah. a estate agent is so fucking black and white. The property has to be empty, or, you know, or ready to move and ready to not be a sitting tenant and not yeah. in a portfolio. So it's not I think that's bad, why really, is it? the year lets properties or, yeah. you know, prime auctions are doing well with, or portfolio are doing so good with these tenants the properties because no estate agent actually knows what the fuck to do with yeah. it. Yeah. So that's only it's one thing. Just... A good, I mean, it's definitely uh, it seems to have been a market that's really developed over the last it's couple of years, couple of years mm. with all the changes and red tape for landlords. The estate agents are trying to sell stuff at 10% 10 percent over home report. Yeah. Investors are not right. interested. Then pay 6 percent ADS. So you're so, paying 16% over home report. So really. you need somebody that's willing to mm. say to the seller and go, look, mm. you're going to have to take 10% yeah. discount did you speak directly to the seller then? 
I didn't know. No, right. Um, so did you get much in background on their information? Oh, sorry, ba- information on their background and the reason why they're selling it, how long they've held them for. Uh, not really, but I found out their names and done yeah. a bit of digging to find out who they were. And yeah, you know, so social out, social uh, media, you can find out who mm, people yeah. are. So they were, they were older, right? Eh? Yeah. Um, aye, so you, you get a, a surmise in that they've probably ha- held them for aye, aye. a fair period of time and they're looking to exit to bank the retirement. Did yeah. you get viewings on any of them? I did, aye. So, so that's, I guess, I met the estate agent, she'd she done the viewings, so she still got paid by the seller. I don't uh, know what she got paid, but right. she got she got she done she's mm. a, she done work. She got yeah. all home reports on it, so that was good from from my perspective. You don't always get yeah viewings and home reports on a portfolio. Ah, right, um, excellent. Admittedly, how, how, the viewings were after I put an offer in. But Ryan obviously yeah. wanted his fee as well. Yeah. Right, so how did you how did you view it, the, the viewings? I always find the viewing with portfolios or tenant properties. Like, how does the owner or the seller line that conversation up because you can unsettle tenants quite easily when you see if someone's going to buy it. Is it? Did you say you were the the mortgage broker or the yeah, so surveyor? Or? No, I think they, they were aware. Right. Uh-huh. I think all the tenants were made aware, like what was mm-hmm. going on, because uh, obviously the estate agent had been in. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, At least they were saying they were selling it to another investor who was keeping them in place, yeah. and there was no. And at any point, no did change. you feel kind of pressure, pressured, thinking I need to make a decision on this? There's a lot to go through here. Like, do I go for this? Do I not? Like, is there other people looking at this? Do you know what I mean? How much did you feel under pressure? Or did you? Uh, not really. Did no. You feel it's like just, you kind of. It's like, well, you just need to work the numbers, and yeah. if, if right. put an offer on, you know, yeah. so. I think uh, but it's I was, a big step though because you're moving right up from buying one property to nine, you know. Yeah, so basically, obviously, your number one for that is like, how do you finance it? Yeah, so, so that's like, a big question. Uh, so, uh, start right there. At this point, I guess I'm using you and uh, Go Financial Services, and uh, so you're on with you and going, you know, what can we do? So, obviously, I've got had two flats that were unencumbered mm-hmm. with my investor's cash in it. Um, and I'm just looking at how I can bridge. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I, I didn't really have any money at the time. <laughs> I basically spent all my cash. So, so your cash money. is kind of tied up. Mm-hmm. So, so you're kind of like thinking, I need some creativity here. Yeah. yeah so the home reports were, I think, uh, oh, I presented it last night. I'm sure it was 635. And then, so my initial plan was to use the two unencumbered assets. But obviously, one had the title issue it's on it. It's security for the bridge. So I ended up, we got all ten valued. And once mm. the values came back, so the, the portfolio I was buying the eight, it was six twenty, and then the value of the the one I bought for Sam came in at seventy. So I worked out. I was like, actually, that's really close without using the other one with the title issue. So I just ditched that from the deal, and I'm so glad I did because that would have just caused me all sorts mm. of pain. So, so at this point, how much cash do you actually need to get this deal through? How much do you need? Uh, so to get the nine properties, you put eight. Yeah. So, so I basically, if if you take the what was it the six twenty plus the seventy, your six ninety at seventy five percent loan to value on that for the bridge, the lender was going to give me like it was five seventeen and a half. So I had negotiated to buy the portfolio for five thirteen. So I went in at five hundred to begin with. That's good. And they were like, "What was the? Sorry, I've was, these figures. I should be writing these down." But so the, the, home, the home report, report was the home, when it first came to me. The home reports were six three five. Aye, and you eventually got it for. So I offered five hundred just as a kind of right. Chuck Cheeky anchor. bastard. Aye, good. And uh, they came back and they were like, "So it was Ryan. Ryan phoned me back. He's like, the bad news is the the." They're, they're, not, they're not accepting your offer. But the good news is, is they want to talk. I was yeah. Like, yeah. So there's an association mm-hmm. going on. Because they were really looking for 525. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll go over halfway. I'll meet you at 513. Right. It works. Kind of just check the numbers. I was like, mm-hmm. that, was, that was amazing that they came straight in with that 525. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I maybe could have got 510 or whatever. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's yeah. like, no, but that was great. You, you'd be grand. expecting yeah. them to come in maybe like 550 or something like that. Eh? Like, but then you're, and then your bridging loan. So was approved at how much? Sorry? I think the net loan after the lender took their cut yeah. uh, worked out at like five hundred and two or three. So you 000. have to top up the ten grand, 10 grand plus right. fees. My legals, their, wow. their legals. This is because the, this is Correct. because sorry, this is because the bridging lender is 
giving you the loan amount based the, on the valuation, the full valuation plus the unencumbered asset against security. Oh yeah, plus yeah. the other property. So it, it's almost like when when so which is private investor finance. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's bought with private investor. This finance. is why he won this as well. Award for uh, raising private. When finance. are they getting paid? <laughs> when's, the, when's the investor getting paid? So good, great still... question. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they don't listen to this podcast. Uh, so, I uh, so basically. Uh, Abridged the whole right. plot. So it's like it's almost like you're buying the nine, it's the eight plus the unencumbered right. one. So when they take the security over it, it's like it's almost as though you're buying the the one you already own again. Yeah. Okay. Uh but now they're taking it it's not a mortgage, but it's bri- as a bridge. It's security the they've got a sec- first yeah. security over yeah. it, yeah. So there's high but with bridging obviously that comes at a cost in terms of servicing that loan. Yeah. But does so, the rental income co- cover the what does it cover the percentage yet? Uh, so here's the story. <laughs> this is when the rates were going mad. And uh, so we've got the bridge offered at 0.89 mm-hmm. a month. So I think the interest payments was, I worked out at like 4,600. So like with the cash flow from my existing portfolio oh, wow. plus the profit. And the so new there, was, one. there was only six tenanted. There was two vacant. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. The, the money that was coming in for there, I had to supplement it a bit, but not a lot. At the eleventh hour, the lender pulled the offer when the rates were going mad, and uh, and came back at point nine nine. Added another one percent, so the the interest payments went from like four six to five one. Which lender was that? Uh, Lend Invest. Lend Invest. Yeah. So at the time, the BDM was um, that Tatiana. Yeah. So we just had that uh, whiskey tasting, mm-hmm. and I literally just met her like a week or two before. And she's like, she was, she was totally offended because she's like, it's the first time I've ever heard of this happening in my whole time in the industry. Uh, somebody pulling that. And yeah. So she's. So she, what do you do? You just have to go with. No choice. Mm. You've offered. You've agreed to you complete. Yeah. Need, need to roll with the punches. So so. so just you're now having to pay it's an extra four hundred quid a month. Probably five hundred. Five hundred a month. Aye. It wasn't a huge hit, I suppose, but at least you you're not having to supplement that. Uh, yeah, it's probably uh, from around. Not having to supplement it. To it to put so at this point, the portfolio is negatively cash flowing, but you've got two, obviously yeah. two properties Do which you've got to get tenants in. Yeah, so one of them, they had tarted up and the estate agent actually had that on open market trying to sell it individually. So when I put the offer in, I was like, get that off the market. Like, right. it's mine. I'm taking mm. it as the whole eight. Okay. Um, so that was ready to let, basically. So we just got in, quick check, all the compliance, yada, yada couple of weeks later tenanted um, the other one was in a bit of a sorry state so it got some cash did, some did that first one then break even the portfolio um, nah probably not no, not, not quite, not quite. Uh, when you say break even you mean servicing the, uh, the loan debt, so yeah he's the, minus 500 quid on his uh, bridging loan to the, the rental income it's yeah, like yeah. The, that one almost break even because I thought like if it was only a few weeks to you're paying 500 quid Yes. Once and then that then it breaks even almost, but if it's, uh, it's, it's not, quite, not quite, I've, I've <laughs> still been supplementing from yeah. my, 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 de- my trading income, yeah, yeah. But I guess it's just it's me just drib drib drabs a little yeah. at a time. So, like at the time when I agreed to go with the deal, I never really had the money, and the same with like the sorcerer, I never uh. had the money to pay the sorcerer. So, I'd agreed to <laughs> how him. much was the sorcerer fee? I think I paid seven in the end. Uh, but yeah. it's basically me and Ryan. I was like, I could do the deal, but I don't know if I can give you money right now, eh? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he was just like. It's all right, let's get the deal done. Ah, so, so it's just, I think I get a feeling he's a decent guy, yeah, just, I don't know yeah. him, but yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't do a deal and he, he doesn't get paid, doesn't or, get or you do, you do deal a deal and he gets a deferred payment. So uh, uh, from, from him it made sense. But he could have got it somebody else, couldn't he? Or like, it's already been agreed and all that. But would he? I don't know. Mm. Right. So, hey. um, so yeah, Tracy done my refurb on, on, on the one uh, that was in a bit of a sorry state, that's tenanted now. So I had, had three months at... Um, full interest uh, bridging payments we put so we ended up so I've refi- I'm refinancing all 10 that I have in my portfolio now we know we know but they're all I guess there's no mortgage on them but I've got that bridge so uh, gone to a long term uh, so they're all going on to five five year fixed mortgages um, the rates are not the best because they've been agreed since the probably October or something. Aye, right, okay. And you're so, past the rates are coming down. But they're still cash flow. Yeah, like, they're, they're not negative. So, yeah, like I've just. But you're very them. much looking at this. Is this really long term? Yeah. Like, 
So, I mean, if you apply your one, your three percent a year, and 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 you know, look at your cash flow increasing, uh, compounding, and then hopefully in five years when you refinance, you're going from six six and a half down to yeah. four. Mm. Even, really? even at four, it's better, right? And then yeah. after all, all everything's <laughs> obviously refinanced. What do you reckon you'll have ploughed in there of your cash pot? That's uh, kind of important bit as well, isn't it? Basically, zero and out with the equity I had. In, in the two assets, the two unencumbered flats. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like, it's pretty much none of my own money. It's just the money that I had, yeah. the investor's money that's in there, I've basically distributed out. Yeah. But it means I can't just refinance to get their money back. Yeah. So, um, I like it, mate. I like it. It's yeah, it's creative. Eh? Cool. Really creative. Yeah. Mm. I think it'll, it'll definitely open eyes up to a lot, ears, eyes open to a lot of listeners mm -hmm. and again I like it because you, you're a guy who's coming into this very much looking at long term which I you know I just cringe when people coming at the property thinking they're going to make loads of money out of it because it's not really about that <laughs> so I think uh, that's what you're saying about how do the investors get their money so actually one of my investors uh, is called their cash back so that's due back in April right. So I need to find 40, 40 grand by mm. April. So okay. um, I guess that's where my SAS comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so How yeah. creatively can we use SAS funding? <laughs> yeah. So basically try and do a loan back uh, into the business with the SAS. Um, You'll figure it out. Yeah. Which I'll free, uh, means free. I can clear that debt with yeah. the investor and then... Less leverage in the I've company. To, I've got to refine it or remortgage my, my house as Looking well. forward, <laughs> would you look at using more private investor funds i don't know I, this a change with the wind on this some, mm. some days i'm like i'll just take cash and go again i'm just like and other times i'm like well i'll just pay them down and yeah. just maybe just slow down a bit and i guess that's what we were talking about Probably, earlier yeah. with, with the balance uh life investing and in life well, like yeah. maybe i just slow down and so you're at that point maybe I don't need loads maybe yeah. I just need to like reduce my debt I'll have a stress free life yeah like last year I was saying I wanted to retire when I was 40 which and everybody's like well you're 40 in October like past I was like yeah but I'm still 40 until <laughs> the next October <laughs> so I've still got like till this October um, in reality I, I'm not ready yeah what, I'm, what does kind of like retirement look like to you in terms of like do you just feel like you would lead quite a simple life like you know you've got your running you've got your I can train in the house with my dog <laughs> is that is that what it is is that like I know yeah probably just what's uh, important to you you can spend time in the house yeah whether it be um, in the UK or, or Scotland or uh, over in the Alps or whatever. Yeah, anything away from the kids. Uh, if, if, I could do, <laughs> if I could do a, a month a month in the winter in, in, in the Alps and a month in the summer in the I'll Alps. join you. Uh, honestly, I'll, I'll join you, be, mate. be brilliant. If I it's spent three years in the Alps, so uh, I, I'll go back there in a shot once my kids are grown up. <laughs> so so you would, go. <laughs> would usually end on that question, hey, where does the next five years look like? What's the growth? But I, I know the answer to the question and you've just kind of almost answered that you're not too sure quite yet. Um I suppose this so, year is it. So the SAS is coming into play. Mm. So I think um, I think I might actually join uh, Jerry Alexander's mm. commercial. Oh, fucking that's how There's another plug. <laughs> another fifty <laughs> quid is due, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or you do him. Or that. So I might I might join some of the yeah. stuff that Jerry's doing. Look at fucking commercial. commercial. A lot of the guys last night at the event as well. Like you know, we've been doing commercial stuff do you know the brightstone property mm. guys yeah chris and andrew I kind of follow loving what they're doing yeah. as well so you know like it's, some it's, great. It's, it's nice to diversify at different asset classes as well i know it's probably a bit it's a commercial entity it's a bit different as well so that's like what you've built a monster yeah. i don't know if i want to be there no uh, i don't want to be there anymore <laughs> <laughs> you need to find someone else now yeah. to do uh, to, to do all your like you're signing of your mortgages oh god so I can forge my signature. <laughs> right, that's us coming up to the hour mark, yeah. guys. This has uh, been brilliant. Um, I really, really enjoyed the chat. Where can people reach out to you and follow the the journey, whether it be <sighs> running on the hills or in property? Yeah, I guess I'm I'm terrible for putting my property stuff on on socials. I just I don't know. I just well, we did well getting you in here today, yeah. actually. Yeah. So was, uh... I guess I'm probably still got the imposter syndrome. I don't feel like I've got much to offer which is that you know, a, I mean that's there's great. value to I learned I learned a, yeah. learn a lot yeah yeah talking, so about, like, talking about that most of, most of my social stuff just 
my kids, my dog, my, my running and a little bit of property as well yeah, yeah, and yeah. investing and stuff. But uh, yeah, mostly Instagram, just uh, Andy Janetta or Facebook, Brilliant. Andy Janetta. Nice, mate. Nah, appreciate you coming on. You're not looking for any more friends, though. <laughs> nah, unless they're runners. <laughs> yeah, come, come follow me. <laughs> cool. Thanks Brilliant. a lot, mate. Thanks for Cheers. that. Cheers. Right, cheers.